Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. On today's episode, we're talking about assisted living and memory care communities, what things you should consider when deciding whether to age in place or if you should move into a senior care community. First up, I'm interviewing the executive director of Mom's Memory Care Community to get a professional opinion on making this monumental decision. Okay. So, introduce yourself, please. Good morning. My name is Alberto Maldonado. I'm the executive director at the Commons at Dallas Ranch. I've been at this community for four years. I've been in the industry for the last 11 years. I've uh, done work previously uh, at Atria Senior Living, where I worked as an engaged life director, as a marketing director, and also a care director. Um, I've had the opportunity to work in this industry, uh, as I mentioned, for the last 11 years, and um, it's been a pleasure because of the opportunities that I've had to to meet people of all backgrounds, but also uh, learn the process of, of aging in place. So tell me about some of the people you've met. You said all kinds of backgrounds. Well, yeah, you meet obviously people that um, that come from different parts of the world, but also people that live through different generations, people that live through World War II, people that um, went through the Depression. Um, so you're, you're, you're getting an opportunity to meet people of all backgrounds and, and, and of different habits and behaviors. And so a lot of times um, when you don't experience this, you... Uh, are, are kind of um, sheltered in a box and uh, being able to work in assisted living I have uh, numerous opportunities to get to know people uh, like I said of different backgrounds but but also different uh, routines and behaviors which are different from my own hmm that sounds interesting you know being a family member of somebody who lives here I've experienced a little bit of that but not as much mm-hmm. so that is that's very interesting yeah. so why should people consider? moving to an assisted living Mm. community? Well, you know, a lot of times it's a really difficult decision. You know, when we first meet people, um, we, a lot of times people associate coming to our community or the process of coming to this community as a sales process. Um, They compare it to that of of buying a car, which is really furthest from the truth. We don't do that. You know, the first thing we, we like to engage in is, is uh, the history of that individual and find out um, why they're even here. We do a lot of exploration and we do a lot of, of checking of boxes to, to make sure that you know we are exhausting every opportunity, not just here but outside of the community. Uh, in some cases, we, we ask questions to family members well, why don't you, have you decided to try something at home? Or, you know, we really want to exhaust every option for them so that they know that, that we're not the only entity that, that can provide the care that they need. Um, but ultimately, um, to me, one of the biggest reasons why people would even move into assisted living is peace of mind. Uh, peace of mind and to have the opportunity to engage in a new uh, lifestyle. Um, uh, of course, if you live at home, you know, you're always going to be, sedentary and really the only person you're talking to is is a person in the mirror or a <laughs> companion that changes every uh, you know every other day and so in assisted living it's kind of like you hit the reset button and you're experiencing a whole new lifestyle you get you're getting to meet the people that I've just mentioned from different backgrounds and so to me it's is definitely beneficial uh, for each person to to try to to have a continuum of life but at some point when that runs out at home, I think that's one of the benefits of assisted living is that you're able to kind of, again, hit the reset button in life. Yeah. I look at it as a way, and my listeners aren't aware of this yet, but I have a grandmother who is just very few days away from turning 100, and she lives at home, and she's mostly blind, and she's kind of burned out my aunt because she doesn't do her own cooking because it's not safe. Um, obviously, she can't drive, so my aunt takes her places. She's got friends that takes her places. She's very resistant to help. Mm-hmm. Um, and I see moving here would be an opportunity for her to, you know, not have to worry about people taking care of her, you know, like family and disrupting their schedules or, um, you know, just you know, the opportunity to socialize more. You know, she lives alone. She's lived alone for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, you Mm -hmm. know, and I know isolation is not a good thing for seniors. 
Right, right. Yeah, I agree, you know. <clears throat> I think, again, that's one of the biggest benefits of assisted living is that you're you're getting away from that, that life of isolation. You know, a lot of times we forget to, to put ourselves in, in, in their shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I personally, if you were to ask me, you know, would I like to, to move into assisted living or, or stay at home? That's obviously a, a really easy answer. We all want to stay at home. We all want to enjoy the house that we built. We want to enjoy being at home. But um, ultimately, we need to do what's beneficial for us uh, in different aspects and, and being around other people and having that that stimulation. That's, to me, the key in being in assisted living. You're obviously interacting with people of, of your era, but also um, people of a different generation. Um, and so uh, th- there's a lot of mutual benefits in that. Um, and again, I, I would assume that there are a lot of health benefits associated to to being active and involved and engaged because that's really what it is you know mm-hmm. although you are just necessarily meeting people you're also engaging in a, in a more physical aspect of life you're coming down to activities um, you're communicating with people I'm sure that the communication that they have at their dining room table or in the programs that we offer goes beyond that area I'm sure they go back to their room and they start to think about that conversation they had with, with these people and so every day is a, is a whole new story for them it makes sense. So what kind of programs do you offer for the assisted living folks? Well, a lot of times assisted livings, um, there's a generalization of, of programs that, that are offered like bingo and things like that. But I think with the, um, with, with the way that assisted living is, is, um, is changing, you're starting to see a lot of the programs that we offer geared towards mental fitness. Um, and so uh, with that being said, uh, a lot of the programs that we offer and, and, of course, a lot of other assisted livings are starting to offer are programs geared towards um, stimulating the mind. Obviously, people um, are, that develop Alzheimer's or a form of dementia um, need to have some type of, of stimulation uh, in order to try to combat that. And so um, for us, we, we try to involve them in programs that will challenge their mind and their thinking, but also involve them in programs, again, that will allow them to socialize and be able to engage uh, in, in, in other things beyond just putting a dot on a bingo card. Yeah. So. <laughs> do you have um, programs where they go out and do things? We do. Um, that's also an important aspect of what we offer. Um, during the week, we have... Uh, outings, whether they're scenic drives, whether they're to restaurants, um, just getting them out of the building because obviously life is not just in our building, it's also outside. And and so being able to get them out uh, of the building, even if it's just to drive around the city, because it's it's a historical um, part of their life as well. Some of these people lived in the area. And so being able to to look at um, uh, at, at the downtown area and how it's changed and um, so those are things that, to me, I think are, are important. And so, again, yes, we offer that as part of their, their weekly uh, programs. That sounds awesome. So what's different with the memory care part of the community? How does it differ from assisted living? Like in the programs, obviously it's secure so mm-hmm. that they don't wander away and get lost and injured. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, programming is a lot different in, in memory care. Um, In that, there is more attention paid uh, specifically to individuals' needs. And so um, as opposed to assisted living where the resident can independently manage uh, being in an exercise program uh, or even an art program, uh, in memory care, there's a little more detail to, to the process of how each program is delivered. Um, For example, if we're doing an exercise program, staff has to be more involved Mm -hmm. um, because there's, again, there's a lot of functions uh, or cognitive functions that the the residents are not able to perform. Uh, And so with the assistance of of staff um, there to help them along the way, that's really a a big difference in in the activities that we offer between memory care and assisted living. Uh, Also, the, the type of programs that are offered, obviously, are geared towards people with um, with dementia or Alzheimer's. Yeah, I've participated in some of them with my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I know she's resistant to participating. Is that pretty typical? It is because, again, you know, we we kind of just assume that when our loved ones come into a community that they're just going to acclimate, and, and that's not the case. You know, we're, we're not there yet, so we can't speak on their behalf, but when someone moves in, it does take a while for them to acclimate. And, 
you know, a lot of the routines that, that family members uh, or residents come in with, um, perhaps they weren't active. And so, um, you know, it's a matter of being able to identify what those programs are and, and what we can cater to um, to be able to engage them. Um, maybe bingo is not for mom. Maybe maybe art is not for dad. I mean, it, it may vary, you know, maybe for them listening to music. That may be something that that may stimulate them. And so um, it's, it's being able to find exactly what their interest is. And, and frankly, not everyone will have an interest in activities. Some people just want to be able to go out, enjoy the weather. Some people have pets and maybe they just like to enjoy their pets. Um, it just really depends, you know. Um, that, that's the best way I would describe that. Oh, my mom enjoys socializing. Yeah. That's what she does a lot. I know. Yeah. So, which is, which is great. Um, and when you mention that they come in with certain routines, um, that obviously is what she did before. I mean, she didn't go to exercise classes mm -hmm. for the longest time. She used to do art, <clears throat> um, but she didn't do that mm -hmm. in the last few years. So I can see that now better coming here. She moved in with kind of the routines. She kind of brought what she could with her, mm -hmm. which obviously is a challenge. I know she hung out in the kitchen a lot and wiped mm -hmm. down the counters and fussed around the kitchen, which obviously is not something she does here, mm -hmm. which is good because that's not safe. But <laughs> um, So when you're talking to maybe an older couple that's facing health issues and might need to consider an assisted living or maybe even down the road memory care, mm -hmm. um, how, you know, what What do you tell them to take into consideration if they want to, you know, obviously most people want to stay in their own homes, but it's not necessarily in their best interest. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of help them navigate that decision process? Well, we, when we move residents in, we, we sometimes, the majority of the time we're dealing with um, the responsible party, whether that's the children or a power of attorney. Um, so there's different approaches to that. You know, if, if it's a couple who's actually being proactive about coming in on their own and independently looking for, you know, uh, to, to move into our assisted living, I find it that those people are easier to move in because they, they've already taken that initiative. Now, residents who move in with the assistance of their loved ones, um, that is where we have perhaps the most difficulty. Uh, and the reason I say that is because you're factoring in two different opinions. You're mm -hmm. factoring in not only the, the individual that's moving in, who is likely coming in dragging their feet, <laughs> or um, the family, which seems to have uh, a skewed perception of, um, of, of what they feel um, their, their loved one, where, where their loved one should live. And, and I say that only because our biggest challenge is moving people into memory care. Mm -hmm. um, a lot Been of times, there. yeah, <laughs> th there's a there's an association to memory care that it's it's like a psych ward or it's um, the, the the nut house. I've heard all those names and words, um, and so um, it, it's farthest from that. I mean, it's it's really not that. It's a community designed for residents that have uh, higher needs, and so um, for us being able to convince family members and the residents is, is probably the most difficult aspect of, of moving them in here. And so um, it, it's a matter of being able to bring them in slowly and helping them integrate. And for us, we're as transparent as can be. And so if at any point they came in, we want them to come in multiple times, experience what it's like to be in memory care during rush hour. Or, you know, that's really the, the only way that someone can ever feel that out. You can never pressure someone to move in. True. When we made the decision we had to move my mom here. I felt very guilty because I kind of felt like we were just warehousing her. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was definitely not an easy move in. Mm -hmm. um, she'd lost my dad and her home and her hairdresser. Like, pretty much everything that she had known was gone. Mm -hmm. And that was traumatic. And I thought it would take a lot longer for her to acclimate than it did. So I was really excited. I came one day and set, found her trailing behind another resident who was adamant she needed to make some phone calls and mom said oh come with me I have to help my friend and that was the like music to my ears mm -hmm. and now I come and visit and she's chatting with friends and she's in someone else's room or they're hanging out in the dining room and and I see how beneficial just sitting around socializing is mm -hmm. you know it's like she didn't get that at home with my dad he wasn't you know super social and 
you're not really socializing with your spouse that much anyway. So yeah, um, I, I definitely had a different difference of opinion after she'd been here a while and I can see the benefit and mm-hmm. you know our decision to move her here was because my sister and brother-in-law work full-time and they have element well school-aged kids and my husband and I are self-employed our daughter's an adult but you know I can't just quit working and take care of my mom which was the assumption that my dad had yeah. and he never talked to me about it so it was you know I'm trying to help people plan ahead so their family members don't end up in the situation that my sister and I ended up with, which was like, holy heck, what the heck do we do? Mm -hmm. I mean, when my dad was assuming she'd move in with me, I didn't even have a spare bedroom. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he thought I was going to put my mom, but, you know, it was just, it was a total lack of planning. So um, what would you tell people on, how would you help them be more proactive? Obviously, it's easier for you if they're Mm -hmm. more, and I think it's better for everybody involved, their family, them. You know, I kind of have a, maybe it's a a pipe dream kind of vision, but I see healthier seniors who want an active lifestyle. They don't want to deal with a home. They don't want to deal with grocery shopping or getting the pharmacy, go in the pharmacy. You know, they come here, they have their needs taken care of. They want to go off on a cruise. They don't have to worry about their home. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't have to worry about cooking, you know, especially for older women. Maybe they've been cooking for their families for 50 or 60 years. You know, after a while, it's like, ugh, right. <laughs> I'm done with that. Right. So right. what would you say to encourage people to at least take a tour and consider, you know, this possibility? Uh, I think reminding them of, of what, you know, their future, how how real it really is that they could potentially be looking at this, you know, in, in just a few years. Um, we're living in an era right now where uh, there's a lot of poor planning and, you know, it's it's scary to think. And even myself, I, I haven't. I mean, my mother's in her 60s, and I haven't even <clears throat> begun to think about. You know, does she have enough? You know, money to be able to live in an assisted living, or what are we going to do when, when when something you know were to happen? And so, um, you know, at, at the drop of a dime, you know, your loved one could suffer a stroke mm-hmm. and could immediately need to live in an assisted living setting. We are all way too busy to be able to care for our loved ones. We can't drop what we're doing. We have kids. We have work. Um, and so to me, being able to reflect on the realities of, of what type of planning you know, they have in place is, is, a, is a way to be able to encourage people to, to at minimum start the process to look into this type of, of lifestyle. Um, but, I'd also, but also encourage them. To, to look at you know what their financials are going to be like are they going to do they have long term care insurance are they veterans have they looked into the possibility of what type of of um, of assistance they can mm-hmm. you know they can get from that not all of us are going to be able to retire and have enough money to move into assisted living assisted living is is a, um, a growing industry and, and I can tell you that pricing is only going to continue to go up and it's only going to be even more difficult for people to live in this type of setting um, so. My my biggest words of encouragement would be uh, asking them the question, what plan do you have in the event of this happening or, or you know, you having to need this at some point? That's a very good, good question to ask because, you know, my husband and I have discussed, you know, what if, mm-hmm. because there are three women behind me with memory issues and starting this podcast, it made me realize that I know there's three. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about my two-time Mm great-grandmother or even further back. So Lord knows how many generations of dementia, Alzheimer's there could be. Right. And, you know, it's it's a scary prospect. And my mom, I think, was not much older than I am when we think she started having symptoms. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to look back and say, oh, yeah, that, that might be an indication um, but she definitely had early onset um, Alzheimer's. So yeah, no, I, I would agree. You know, that's also something that people tend to forget is that they need to look at their lineage and and be able to see the history. You know, of what their parents or their grandparents, you know, experienced as part of their aging process. Uh, unfortunately, some of us don't have that. But for those of us th- that do have the opportunity to look at that, we should. You know, they, mm-hmm. that's also a, a, a good avenue to 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 walk through because, um, you know, it, it may skip the generation and it might be us that, that has, you know, dementia. Hasn't, hasn't skipped any yet. That's <laughs> really scary. <laughs> so, yeah, that's something that, that is definitely um, 
consideration. That's important. Let's take a quick break and thank our sponsors who make it possible for Fading Memories to come to you free of charge every week. MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life, serving others the way they prefer to be treated, and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbk seniorliving.com or call 949-242-1400. That's some good advice to consider, but I think it might be useful if we heard from an actual resident, someone who's lived in the community and can give us some more details. So I asked Alberto if he had somebody in mind. And Paul, and you're a resident here in the assisted living Jane. community. I've been here for two years, so I am... Uh, familiar. You're familiar, okay. And with the good folks that run it. <laughs> awesome. So what 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 made you decide to move here? Because I'm sure that was not an easy decision. This is a great story. Okay. <laughs> you asked me now. Um, I'm a Christian, and I pray for important things in my life that God will show me the way that He knows that I that He wants me to go. <laughs> So uh, I had been praying about, um, after my husband passed away, I was praying about the Lord leading me in where I should go, uh, that uh, where he wanted me to go. So we had been looking all around, and they were nice places and, uh, and all, but nothing ever stirred me. Oh, this is it, you know. And then one day my son said, you know, I heard of another place, Mom. Do you want to go look at it? And I said, might as well. We've looked at all the others. <laughs> it's like house hunting. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, we, when we drove up here, I thought, gee, this doesn't look like a care facility. It looks like a summer resort. <laughs> you know, it's very warm and inviting. So anyway, we, uh, I, I hadn't told my kids that I was praying about it all the time. But uh, as I got out of the car, I started silently praying, Okay, Lord, if this is it, show me some way that this is where you want me to be for whatever reason you have for me. Anyway, we came in that front door, and I walked in about three paces, and it was just like he said, Okay, Jane, this is it. And I turned to my son, Don, I said, sign me up. He says, you haven't even looked at it. You don't even know what's available or what they have to offer, Mom. And I said, this is it. So what is it you like best about being here? The people that, that run it. Uh, let's yeah. let's make sure we note that you pointed at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's just like family. That's true. My mom is over in the uh, memory community. Heard, yeah. And yeah. I, I visited there because I have friends that were started out here, mm -hmm. but uh, they eventually needed to go there. So I'll go over once in a while and see them. So, how long did you live in the home that you left? Your I, my home? Yes. Oh, gosh. Uh, it was right here in this general area. Um, let's see, we'd lived there a number of years. Our kids, uh, when we moved up here from Southern California, my husband was with a telephone company. <laughs> my dad and my father-in-law were with a phone company. Really? Mm -hmm. I'll be darned. And he was uh, given the job of a uh, tax man, and, uh, the, but he had to come up here from the L.A. area. He was working out of the L.A. office. So anyway, so we came up, and uh, we just love it up here. Uh, well, I grew up in the area. Yeah. So. Oh, you know. Well, see, I've I seen didn't. it change a lot. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. 
and we've been treated fantastically here. Awesome. I really have. I I feel comfortable. I feel like I'm at home, and uh, it's just great. So what um, what's your favorite part of the day here? Besides me. <laughs> um, you can be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Favorite part I mean, they have great day. food, so meal yeah, times. They do have yeah, they good do. food. And, uh, well, I just think any of their activities that they plan, you're getting together with people that you otherwise wouldn't get together with if they hadn't planned something for you to be uh, involved uh, together in. <laughs> And uh, I like people, I, and, and I really do. And I think that's one of the reasons that maybe the Lord put me here was because I don't, know, I don't uh, meet strangers. I meet <laughs> potential friends. And it was funny, too, because I'm a Dodger fan. Ah. And the men at the next table aren't. <laughs> 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 and... Uh, so when they would get up and walk by my table, here I was brand new. They didn't say, well, welcome. Hope you'll be happy here. Nothing, you know. <laughs> they just walked by, and I thought, oh, shoot, they're not friendly and welcoming me or anything. And uh, so one day one of them came dressed in some uh, giant's garb. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, ha, ha. So when he got up, when he finished his lunch, and he got up and walked by my table, you know, just as if I didn't exist, I said, Go Dodgers! <laughs> <laughs> and we've been at it ever since. We have had more fun and have become really good friends. That's awesome. So that was fun. <laughs> well, if you need another Dodgers fan, there is one over in the memory care community. Is your mom a Dodger fan? No. Oh. Uh, it was a gentleman named oh, Xavier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he gave me uh, um, this is my oh, hat cute. that I'm going to wear. He gave me this. Xavier gave you that? I'm pretty sure he's okay. the one. Yeah, well, yeah. he's the only Dodgers fan over yeah. there that I'm aware of. Yeah, and he's got two little dogs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's them. Uh, the day I was, he came, uh, the first day I think he was moving in, I happened to be going into my room, and uh, he had these two little dogs, and they had Dodger something on them. <laughs> and I said, oh, I see you're a Dodger fan. He said, yeah, are you? And I said, yeah. And his daughter or whoever it was that was with me says, you ought to give her one of those caps, Dad. You've got enough of them. <laughs> and so he went back to his room and got me that cap. Yeah, he's so a So I've guy. used it a lot in there. And they, so it's going to be my, oops, i got to glue it some more. But oh. anyway, we're going to wear hats today. Ah. And that's going to be my hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to spring training next weekend, but it's for the Giants. Sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> well, my, I have two boys. One's in the Oceanside and one's uh, here. And the one that's here has gone to the do uh, Giants. Gone over to the Giants. Got to go for the home team. Oh, yeah. But I'm still with the Dodgers. <laughs> that's good. Um... So do you participate in the outside excursions, too? I did at first. Mm -hmm. When I came here, I didn't have any gear. I didn't need it or anything, but I have fallen, and I'm just I'm on my <laughs> downward bend. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they take such good care of me, I'm sure. It's, you know, I'm going to stay around a while longer. But uh, I don't go out. Uh, I don't get around much anymore. I just don't feel up to it but you, you get enough socializing and activities oh, I'm here active here inside the building but to get on that bus <laughs> I, oh I did the other day with the doctors they mm -hmm. took me to the doctors and so forth but um, but this is and and uh, I ought to put this in because this isn't me but I have uh, talked to other ladies that have uh, gone to other places, mm -hmm. uh, uh, care facilities, and they have, to a woman, they have told me that this is by far the best one. Says, we heard about this one, or I heard about this one, and, and how good it was and everything, so I wanted to try it. And she says, uh, I wouldn't go anyplace else. So uh, that was 
something that gave me a lot of yeah. encouragement. Yeah, that kind of recommendation yeah. is yeah, nice. Right. So one last question, because I know we're gonna we're cutting into your lunch hour here. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> what you said, your husband passed away, and you were living alone. What made you think about, or was it your family that talked you into considering well, a, well, a community uh, like this? Yeah, I was living alone in a three bedroom house, and uh, I went to stay with my son for a little while. But he is so busy. In his own activities, uh, he sings in the church choir. He's got a lot of involvement in in that area, and I just couldn't keep up with all of it. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, 93. Awesome. I have a grandmother that's about to be 100. Yeah, I know. I think about that. I'm 51, and I'm like, oh, for another 49 years makes me tired, but. <laughs> oh. That's okay. My maternal grandmother lived to 91 with 91. Alzheimer's. No. Oh, so there's a longevity in my family, Boy, even there. if your mind goes. <laughs> well, my my dad uh, died at 63, oh. and I had everything he had. My mother had nothing and uh, wrong with her, uh, and she lived to be 98. Wow. And my dad died at 63, and I thought, well, there I go at 63 probably, <laughs> you know, and here I am at 93. Yeah, that's, cr- so that's amazing. That weird? Uh-huh. You just never know. Yep, that's you why know. I'm trying to use this podcast yeah. as a way to help educate people on planning ahead. Because mm-hmm. we didn't have planning ahead with my parents, and we didn't have planning ahead with my grandparents. Right. My great-grandmother, who also had dementia died before I was born, so I don't know if there there probably wasn't planning that far back. Um, So I'm trying to get people to see, you know, they should consider looking into these kind of communities. I have never heard of any criticism, negative criticism made of this place or anyone that works there. Yeah, it's, uh, everybody just feels like family. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's just great. And I know that I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe I haven't fulfilled that yet. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe it's going to be this article. Who knows? This might be your uh, your big move to Hollywood. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You are entirely welcome. I hope I gave you a little something that you can use. I believe so. Well, that's a tough act to follow. Guided by God, everyone there feels like family, meant to be there, no complaints, never heard a critical word. I don't know what better rating you can give a place to spend the rest of your years. So let's review some of the things to keep in mind when considering whether to age in place or move to a senior community. Do you feel safe in your neighborhood? Do family and friends worry about your safety? Senior living communities offer round-the-clock security staffed by people who will know you by name and watch out for you. Is your home aging-friendly? If not, can you afford to make aging-friendly modifications? Think about bathroom renovations, zero-step entries, improved lighting, and widened doorways. Needed modifications like these can be costly. Do you have family and friends who can reach your home quickly any time of day or night if you have an urgent need that occurs between caregiver visits? Having a ready backup plan is a necessity because you never know when you'll need to fill the gaps between caregiver visits. When you're no longer comfortable or confident behind the wheel, what will you do about transportation? Lack of easy access to transportation can result in escalating problems including isolation, missed medical appointments, and lagging nutrition. How will you get around after you hang up the keys? Are your adult children and other loved ones living nearby where they can help with hiring, screening, and scheduling caregivers for you in your home? A senior living community manages the care you receive in the community from services and amenities in your independent lifestyle and throughout the continuum of care. Do you prefer to know help is nearby if you need it? Senior living communities combine independence with security. Will your budget support around-the-clock home care if it becomes necessary? While most older adults believe they'll never need long-term care, research proves about 70% of us will need care at some point in our lives, 
and with the average hourly cost for caregivers at about $23 to $28 per hour, serious consideration of the prospect is only sensible. Would you rather not worry about home maintenance and repairs? The prospect of a lifestyle with diminished home ownership responsibility motivates many to make a move to senior living. Could you see yourself leaving at least some of the cooking and cleaning to someone else? Well-balanced meals served restaurant style in the dining room are a perk most communities offer. Make sure to try some of the meals before you move in. You want to make sure you get a place that serves gourmet food. Will you need transportation for errands or appointments? Most senior living communities offer some type of transportation service, either regularly scheduled or as needed. Are you concerned about managing your medications? Professional medication management is commonly offered to residents of assisted living and memory care communities. You can have your medications delivered to the medications manager, giving you one less annoying errand to worry about. Are you still active? A senior living community will make it easy to stretch body and mind daily with convenient access to a host of activities. Do you ever worry about becoming a burden to your family? The move to a senior living community takes care of that. In fact, many residents often say their move is a gift to their adult children who can thereafter be confident that mom and dad are safe and happy with a plan for the what ifs. Well, that's a lot of information. I hope it was helpful along the journey of making this decision whether to age in place or move to a senior community. If you've enjoyed this episode and found it helpful, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, do you mind giving us a four or five or even 25 star review? By doing this, you help others to find us and allows us to share the information and support that this podcast is designed to give. I appreciate you listening. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you again next week.